Balladors Wrathweavers were introduced with the release of Lightfall and have since flown under the radar for mainly two reasons. Number one, they require you to be using Stasis Warlock, which unfortunately is a shell of its former self, now overshadowed by the pure potency of Strand Warlock. And number two, the buff they provide has some needlessly complicated restrictions. The perk Hearts of Ice reads, your Winter's Wrath Shockwave deals increased shatter damage. Allies in range of your Shockwave gain an overshield and increased damage with Stasis weapons. And let's be real, the only part we really care about about is the increased damage to stasis weapons. So, how does the damage buff work? Well, to start with, the buff itself is classed as what I'm dubbing a wildcard buff, meaning it is not part of any of the known buff families like empowering buffs, global debuffs, or weapon boosts, and it also lasts for exactly 15 seconds. This means Hearts of Ice can stack multiplicatively with absolutely everything. Okay, but how much is the buff anyway? In this clip here, you can see that I hit Carl unbuffed with Ice Luna for 5,559. Then I self proc the buff, more on this later, and hit for 6,393, which is a 15% damage increase. Now to prove that it stacks with everything. Here you can see I'm standing in a well of radiance while having Carl debuffed by tractor cannon and having three times stasis weapon surge, hitting Carl again for 12,674, which is the expected value starting from 5,559 when you multiplicatively stack 1.25x, 1.3x, 1.22x, and 1.15x. Okay, so why is no one using it? This sounds great. Well, as mentioned previously, you've got to be using Stasis Warlock to make this happen, which to be honest is manageable, but not as easy as throwing on Strand. More importantly though, this exotic has some quirks which need to be addressed. First and most obviously, this buff only applies to stasis weapons, and pre-season of the deep you'd be silly to run this, but as you'll see shortly, the existence of cold comfort now brings this exotic into question once again. Also, the application of the buff to your teammates is easy enough, just pulse the shockwave and you're good to go, but it's a little trickier to apply to yourself. You see, if you want the buff yourself, you need to activate the shockwave on the frame your super ends, around about here. It does not apply to you if you try any other way, which does introduce a bit of a skill issue, which I'm okay with, but this may be a bug. Also, whoever on your team places Well of Radiance will not receive the buff either, since as far as I'm aware, standing in a Well of Radiance, specifically if you are the Wellcaster, converts your ordinary weapon damage into ability damage, and because Hearts of Ice only affects weapons and not abilities, the buff doesn't work on the Wellcaster. Okay, so now we're fully equipped on how this exotic functions. Why am I revisiting it? Well, before Season of the Deep came out, the only viable stasis rocket in the game was Bump in the Night, and even it was outshone by the Hothead, so back then this exotic was not worth your time. Now, however, we've got access to the new rocket from the Ghost of the Deep dungeon, Cold Comfort, which comes with quite possibly the best perk combination in the game for a rocket, Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch. Oh, and did I mention, it's also a stasis rocket. As I'm sure you've all seen, Cold Comfort is the new king of rocket burst DPS, with it being able to shoot four rockets in a row due to Envious and its origin trait. Therefore, with the aid of Hearts of Ice, this might just make Balladors Wrathweavers worth running. In order to justify this in a raid setting, we need to look at what is lost and gained in using Hearts of Ice. In your typical raid without Hearts of Ice, you normally have one Warlock placing a well, one Hunter on a tether or tractor, and the rest is usually damage supers. Additionally, players have the freedom of running whatever element rocket they like. With Hearts of Ice, you're now giving up a potential fourth damage super in you, the user, having to run stasis, and your team is forced to use Cold Comfort. However, the well user is unchanged, the tether slash tractor is unchanged, and the other three or four damage supers remain the same. The question is, is the trade-off of losing one damage super and forcing your team onto Cold Comfort, mind you with a specific role, worth it? Well, in my view, for organized and dedicated teams, the answer is yes. But for your average LFG, you're going to have a hard time convincing your team to run a Cold Comfort which they might not even have, but you may still find success. As we've seen, you can proc this yourself. So in this next test, I've compared the damage of running a cold comfort setup with and without Hearts of Ice. Guardian down.
The Hearts of Ice test loses by about 200k, but you've got to consider that if you manage to get the rest of your team running Cold Comfort, it's not a net damage loss anymore, since your whole team will be benefiting and not just you. Plus, being only 200k shy without the need for a damage super or factoring in bait and switch is enough justification for me. But, as with all these things, I'll leave you to be the judge, dear viewer.